I constantly get emails from art galleries and different things all over time. I've signed up for so many things throughout time. And this came in the other day from an auction site. And I was like, what? I had to get to the bottom and find out a little bit more about this artist named Herman David Solomon Corodi, an Italian who was, uh, I think he was sponsored by the British royal family at one point, and he was, I guess, friends with a lot of European royal families. So he got to travel a lot in the 1800s, the kind of mid to late 1800s, during this kind of reset era time. And the images he captured are astounding. I just am absolutely blown away by them. So I wanted to share a bunch of them with you. And this is what he looked like. He kind of looks like an awesome like character. He looks kind of like the guy from that the dude talks to in the Big Lebowski at the bar. I forget his name. Sam Sam Neil Sam Jones some, some, Sam O'Neill maybe. But either way, looks like a great guy, well traveled, a fellow painter, fellow artist, great mind traveled all over the world. His dad, I believe, was an architect, so I think that gave him a lot of the uh, amazing skill he has in, in capturing these buildings. And I think his son was also an artist as well, which is right here, or either his son or his brother. But he came from a very talented family, and I love on this channel honoring artists. You know, when I find them, I'm constantly looking for great new art. And when I find artists that blend with um, just kind of what I've got going on this channel, I feel like I just have to expose them to you all because it, it's just amazing. The more visuals and different thoughts we can get into our heads, and the artists I think hold the key to a lot of um, a lot of our history. And what's in private collections is definitely a whole another series of amazing things. So take a look. I'm gonna kind of just fly through these. I recommend you just kind of pause on them and take a look at uh, at some of them because they really are astounding. The way he captures the light, atmosphere, and color of the day is perfect. And it reminds me of Piranesi, but with more color and from a different time period. And like Piranesi, you kind of can't really tell. It seems like there's even more gigantic buildings and ruins around. But these are, again, like kind of what we still see today, and plus a lot more that have been destroyed in wars and God knows what throughout the Middle East, all these different places, all these coastal areas that have just been trashed throughout time and lost. And so, you know, they and the people that went through and have trashed these things and these relics over time just have no mercy for it. And they, they don't care to, like, you know, destroy something and preserve it in any way. They just want it destroyed and removed from the collective conscious. And look at these things. That completely reminds me of Piranesi, but just shells of ancient civilizations still existing where what looks like, it looks like pets and animals, the humans, in these scenes surrounded by these and this capturing of moonlight it is unbelievable his lighting is just is perfect every one of these you feel like you're in the place the skies look incredible the trees everything looks just ridiculously good such so talented so inspirational so picturesque so just like perfect and this is really cool it's like a little like like a like a religious like spiritual kind of tent in the middle of the, the water really amazing like a little confession booth or something but you get the feeling from this you know I, I can't help but reminisce on the times without cell phones without the internet you know I love meeting you all and I love doing these videos and stuff and interacting with people and learning from the internet and all this stuff but the toss-up of having a world that's calm and peaceful and every moment is spent surrounded and engulfed with nature like I don't know if it's worth it I really don't I, I, I do appreciate the technology and it's definitely fun but it's also probably at the same time killing us and these people were existing at a time with like you know no chemicals no chemtrails those skies are natural that weather is natural the ocean currents there's not like just trash masks Dunkin Donuts cups bags of dog feces hanging out everywhere there's like it's it's clean it's cared for there's not flashy advertisements and lights and all these things there's like the delicate use of nature in in all its lights and candles and different uh, car like other ways of producing life that we didn't even probably know about and i'm sure they had etherical devices those things at the top of those again things at the top of those buildings had to be, have a purpose they really did it seems like one of the most expensive and technically advanced parts of all these buildings and so for it to not have a purpose seems a little insane but look at all these different just places these different vistas that this guy captured like every one of them has a great structure a great composition a great like you know everything he didn't spare any detail he didn't like intentionally try to leave people out or and he captured every part of the day morning eve 
in interacting, people interacting with nature surrounded by these ruins, people in caves, like where did those caves go? How long have the cave systems been going? The underground subterranean worlds, you know, they like, it's just, they come on the outside. It almost looks like all these beings came from there and then when things settled, they came out and this is kind of them like almost getting reacquainted with being out here in this world. And you know, maybe that is the cause of this destruction. We see in places like Dresden when these places get ruined and then time takes over, washes it away, the rains, the seasons just come and kind of change everything, dull it down and boom, you don't know if something's been blown up five years ago or 5,000 years ago. There's almost no, like this, it's tough to tell because especially when they're, it's immaculate architecture and um, you know, it, it, in the, the story of it, the history, the truth of it is gone. And a lot of these, I don't know where all these were, but this guy seemed like he got paid to just travel around and create these masterful paintings. And uh, they had a, it's a pretty good sponsor, but just perfect, perfect views, the distance, the light, every one of them, the clouds, the reflections of the water, the depth, the, it's just perfect, really amazing. And look at those cities, all those different things right on the coast of the water. And, how many resets, how many places are underneath, how many places have been melted and then built on again, um, and who was the originators, were they giants, all the questions, all the same questions pop into my mind when viewing an artist like this. These questions that hopefully will get answered as the need for answering them becomes demanded again by the people of this world, and I hope it does. hope new forms of archaeology start to form and we really get into the deeper and incorporate all the private collections, new architectural digs in the strategic places, new, just, just free the knowledge, free us all. And this was a, a, a pyramid in Rome, it said, and I wonder when that was destroyed. If this guy was doing it in the late 1800s, you know, uh, that was, must have been destroyed recently because I've never heard of anything about it. And I love these, a triptych, I can't imagine what was under there. But just like nomadic life, all these people, they're just every waking breath is is existing in a in a clean environment it seems like especially just at least in comparison to now there's not billions of electronic radiations blasting everywhere people are focused on what has to be done in order to survive in order to get food people aren't valuing things that are impossibly and unnecessarily valued they're valuing food they're valuing time they're valuing their the supplies that they need in order to make the food in order to make their time better they're they're treating everything great and i wonder what they thought of these buildings like growing up in a time being born in a time when you, you don't know much you don't have the internet you don't have any of this you're just existing and you're being raised in the in these huts or in a cave you're born in a cave and you come out and these ancient things are here like what do you learn how does that life form i love that color that blue is perfect and so is that but you know all these people all these different thoughts to take into account that this art brings up and really amazing. I can't believe I've never heard of him before. Incredible skill. He's definitely inspired me. I have one of his visions I want to try and tweak and make a little different and kind of borrow a little bit of his essence and his skill. But look at this etchings, these engravings. This guy did it all. He was amazing. What a dream it would be to just go around that time period with the, with the task of just drawing what you see for, for royalty. Everything, all expenses paid just draw me some amazing things and we're gonna stash it in the uh, royal compartments and not tell anyone the other things the, the certain paintings we're gonna keep and we're never gonna show anyone and those are the ones you report back to us on and keep hidden who knows but just very beautiful love in just finding new artists and seeing it and uh, just un just embracing whatever comes to mind from it and the inspiration it gives hope you all feel the same way bless you all